Well, hi there YouTubers. Um, hope this finds you uh, all well on a rather sunny day. I think the storm seems to have passed. Uh, we've had some pretty pretty shocking weather for a while. Um, but looking pretty good at the minute. So anyway, I've just got, uh, I've just finished off doing a job here on my leather stuff. Um, I'll just, uh, well, not easy to do it this way. Just finished putting the uh, cut a case out and a, there's a dangler being made to match. Um, and bits and pieces are ready for that. That's for Ulrich's knife. I'll, I'll do a show on this later, but he wanted a fishing knife, but he didn't want a filleting knife. He wanted something that looked a bit more, well, it's a bit more, a bit more, I don't know. So anyway, he said, left it up to me. So anyway, this is what I've come up with, but I'll, I'll show that another time. The, the knife's all ready and done. It's just the case to finish. I've just been putting the die on, because obviously that can be left then all to all, you know, make sure it all dries thoroughly and everything. Um, before I move on to the next stages of that, so but I've got another job waiting for me upstairs, so I'll uh, we're gonna have a, a wander up there, and this is from um, a trip we did put the lights off um, last weekend. Unfortunately, I did take the camera down, and I intended filming the trip. Um, forgot the bloody charger, and the battery was dead. So you hear other people say things like that, and think, oh yeah, what a load of rubbish. Oh, it does happen. So. But from that trip for the last week or so, we've had um, uh, here's the bags. I've just I brought the bags up a little bit earlier just before I did the uh, the leather work to try and let everything dry out, dry out, not dry out, warm up. I should say, not dry out, warm up, because it's been in the fridge for a week. So whenever I get back, everything goes into the fridge, and uh, I let I leave it to sit there. Oh, I better turn the radio off just in case I get done for I'm get told off for copyright or something. Um, so I put it in the get back, everything goes, just goes straight into the fridge in the garage and it sits there for about a week while all the meat sort of like settles and relaxes and the rigor comes out of it and everything. So just uh, sharpened my little boning knife. The most beloved hates sharp knives. Strange. <laughs> Don't go down too well. So anyway, whenever I want to do anything, I've got to, I try and keep one spare. I keep, I keep my little boning knife spare. Keep it to one side, keep that sharp. Um, strange though, it seems to go blunt all on its own. I don't know how that happens, seeing as she doesn't like sharp knives, but uh, I've just cleaned this up this morning and should do the job. I'm getting ball patches on my arms again. So anyway, what I'll do is um, I've got in the first bag on the top here, which you can't see yet, um, we've got a lump of back strap and something else because we divvy everything up and then we sort it all out and we all split it up between us, whoever's gone on the trip and people like that and stuff, people we know. Um, I look like there's a lump of backstrap in here which needs cleaning up and then bagging up. And I have no idea what's in it at all. Ah, looks like goat. I think. I'm not too sure. Bits of. Bits of all bloody sort. Christian, you've been hacking away again, haven't you? Uh, but basically what I do, I've got a few Ziploc bags, so everything can be cleaned up and it goes into the Ziploc bags. Don't forget to label them and then uh, just makes it handy when you come in. So there's not, what, not a lot of, can do when you've got a full leg, so that's a quick rinse. There and then what I'll do is I'll uh, bob you guys down here so you can see what I'm doing. Alright. That reasonably flat, that's my fellow, so I can see what I'm looking at here. Yep. Should be reasonably okay. So what I'll do is I'll just start with the uh, we'll start with the back strap. So this is from um a deer my lad got. And there's hairs all over it as well. Um so you know it's his first red deer and I've had a few pictures out about that. So basically what you've got on here is a big long stretch of very nice meat. And uh, also, I think I might be just working on the blue surface, so it's going to be easier. Right, there we go. However, what you've also got is lots of, uh, on the top side, this is all sinew and um, silver skin. So all this has got to come off. Same thing, you've got pieces at the side, just across here. So... It, when you are looking at a piece of meat, you know, people often look at a piece of meat and think, oh, it's just, they just see a huge piece of meat. But it's always got little dividers to it and ways you can tell where meat's come through. So what you do is, one of the ways to do it is, rather than being overwhelmed by it, because I keep all the little bits and pieces while I go in a pan, the, do the dogs get it. Um, so it's just looking for the bits that, don't, that are not attached to the same piece. 
and it's the same with the legs. Once you start uh, cleaning them up, it's just a case of finding all the bits that don't go together. As you can see here, that's where I've just taken that piece off from there. Then what I'm going to do with this is I'll start from that side. Now, just like filleting a, filleting a fish, is some of this fat off. We'll start from about here. And I'll actually, I'll just make a little nick under here to start this off, and I'll show you. There we go. So what you've got is you've got this sinew that runs all the way down the back, and then the meat, nice clean meat underneath. Hopefully you can get a bit of light on that. So and then what you, the idea then is just like filleting a fish. Once you've got that started, you get your knife, I'll take it, your knife nice and flat, and just slide it along, and pull that off. Nice sharp knife helps. Well, it doesn't have to be nice, it just has to be sharp. There we go. And then what you've got then is a nice big long piece of really, really nice meat. And a big lump of sinew. Here's where this comes in handy because I'll uh, just chop this up a little bit. Makes it easier to boil for the lads and they don't go choking on huge lumps when they're inhaling them. There we go. And that bit off the side, which is not really enough to mess about with, I don't think. There we go. Tell you what I did forget, just put a pan, this pan. Have a pan handy, it just gives you somewhere to throw all the bits because that's what I was gonna go. I'll have a quick cook up. It'll feed the lads for a day or two. Right now the rest of this. Anywhere else you can see these bits of uh, the bits of silver skin and the bits of sinew. You can just slide them off like you can if you put a sharp knife. Goes in there. Now what I'm going to do is on the other side, don't worry if you see little bits of fat, there's not much fat on a deer, or on most, you know, most wild things. Um, so any bit, little bits and pieces, I just leave it on or else, you know, it does end up very, very dry. This is covered in hair, thanks Christian. But, uh, right, now what I'm going to try and do is cut this into sort of like cookable lumps for me and the most beloved. Because there's only the two of us now, so see how easy that goes through there, here. And then a bigger piece, probably about there, and then that end bit. And that'll give us something like three fairly even sort of meal bits. I'll probably take that one, take a little bit of silver skin off of there. Take that one in half and I'll put that one together. So that's about there. And I'm just going to give these a quick wash. A little tip there. A nail brush. Great for getting hair. Goat hair, deer hair, rabbit hair, anything. Great for getting the hair off when you give things a quick rinse. Now normally I'd give them a bit of a dry with some tissue, but we haven't got any. We've run out of a little bit of hair. So I'm just going to bag these up, put them to the side, and then I know what we've got. That little one. Oh, another one. Oh, no, so, the most beloved doesn't mind actually just, you know, pretty much most things. Just so long as it looks like it's come from uh, pack and save or countdown rather than uh, out in the field somewhere. So that's what she wants. There we go. Obviously the size you put away, you know, how much you put into a bag depends on how big your family is and what you're going to do with it. But as long there's only two of us. If we put a meal on for somebody else and other people come round, I just get two bags out. So there we go. So that's the first bit. That one. Now I'm not sure what was in this other bag, but it looks a bit of a cut on a minute. Ah, the loin cut. Now some don't like this, they, they say oh it can be a bit, a bit urine -y or whatever, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's the uh, tenderest meat you'll ever bloody have. It just needs cleaning up and then very gently, cooking very gently, and you almost see it swell up in the pan. That's for the lads, let's see you a bit there. Right, and then, what's on that side? Just there, look. 
Yeah, I'm just looking for those little uh, sinewy bits, little silvery bit. You don't want that on, that would actually spoil the whole thing. Very gentle with this line cut, it's very, very tender meat. There we go. And that end off there. And once again, a quick clean to get rid of the uh, hair. I'll put this a little bit separate because uh, I know in the UK, when I first came over here from the UK, this piece, this meat was something like £30 a pound or something like that, was it £30 a kilo? So then it's very expensive, so I'll keep that separate and that definitely doesn't go into stews and everything, roasts and things. So what have we got here? In fact, I've also got a bit of bloody meat. I'm not sure what kind of bloody dog meat are for this. Hmm, it can go down to how you present something, I suppose. Keep that. Uh, that one's all ready. I'm going to keep a couple of bags handy. Oh, before you even start, get a couple of bags handy because I'm going to need somewhere to put the skin and everything when I uh, clean the other legs off. Uh, right, and what the hell have you given me? I have no idea what this is or where it's from. Hmm. Oh, yes. Legs. Front leg. That's off the front legs. Hmm. I think the lads might be getting some of that. I don't like the look of that. Looks a bit manky. Right. Get this silver skin off here. The uh, sinew off. There we go. Once you get it started, flip it over and... There we go. Bump. Oh. Back to the sink for this bit. And do a lot of this is just mix it up between stew and uh, slow cooker and the dogs, I think. Yeah, no goat, it's deer, so yeah, I think that might be a couple. I'll get a couple of bags of uh, Stew mate. Yeah, it's sinew even running through. Oh, by God, a heck of a lump of sinew running through that. There we go. Right, put on the scale. We've got a set of scales here, so just I can just see how much uh, meat going into each bag. Again, so we know so we know how much we're cooking in a, a meal. Like I say, we always put, well I tend to put now, now the lad isn't here, because we used to <laughs> go through quite a bit more then. Um, but uh, what I tend to do now is do the smaller bags, like I say, and if anybody's coming, then you just do more than one. There we go. So, it's just a case of, again, you just keep picking, it just takes a little bit of time, you just pick through it. Don't worry about small peas. If you're going into the stew, a lot of it, once you get you, know, you get a reasonable hot, um, I get this in the crock pot, give it a few hours in there, and uh, any fat just literally just melts, and then the smaller bits of the sinewy stuff will literally just uh, dissolve. So, but any bigger bits, I just have a bit, keep, so I keep having a bit of a pick out, and uh, goes for the dogs. So nothing gets wasted. What the hell are you giving me there, Christian? There we go. Oops. And they love it. Oops, missed the bag. Right. So I'll put that to the side now, the legs. I can't be asked messing with these, I don't think. But yeah, shin beef, I mean, some most of it doesn't do too bad in the old slow cooker. I need a bit of a crock pot. So what I will do is the nicest bits, all the nice bits without all the uh, leggy sinewy bits on, I will uh, put them in and then mark them up as possibly, make, make, a, 
you know, something like a, a curry or something, something that isn't necessarily going to get in the pot for hours. And then the other stuff will go into the uh, bag for um, curries, yeah, for curries, for, for stews, and into the crock pot. And it'll sit in there for five, six hours, something like that. And literally all that sinew, everything else, it will literally just dissolve. And all you're left with is the meat. And it makes absolutely awesome stews because it holds together so well. That right now, what I'll do is a couple of big bits of these. I'll just uh, cut them straight across. So these will be cut across. And these are rims bound like this, and then all the small stuff that I want to come have. And there we go. Going across the shin like this, don't cut them to little bits, cut, cut decent sized chunks because as the uh, connective tissue dissolves, they actually fall apart. So, you've got, what you've got to try and think about is the size of the pieces of meat when they'll be when they're not being held together. Like that. There we go. Now, that's only enough for one. And you need a bit more of it because, obviously, like I say, quite a bit of it will dissolve. Just a hair. As much of the air out of the bags as you can it helps to stop freezer burn. That's why the uh, the vacuum packs are very good. I just can't afford one. Just big chunks like this. Skin this off on here, and then I'll have to take a breath and uh, just clean it all up after I've got the skin off. Um, but basically, it's just the same as you do anything else. There we go, as soon as you get it going. <laughs> so, very nice, uh, really well conditioned uh, yearling was this. The good uh, a nice shot, one shot, clean kill. Very nice bit of work it was by the lad. still warm but uh, because we were uh, we were away the following morning pretty much what we did we just uh, quartered it up and then obviously leaving the skin on keeps it clean so obviously there's wherever it's been out and there's hits of hair but the bulk of the uh, the bulk of it is all nice and clean same thing again just 
I don't know if you're just taking that bit of connective tissue off from around there. Keep it nice and clean. Try not to try not to cut into the actual meat. So you don't need a lot of pressure. Another reason to have a decent sharp knife. You don't need so much pressure to cut into it. Cuts a bit cleaner. Right. Oh, it's dried a bit. It's a burn, just a bit of drying of the meat. There's nothing wrong with it. Already, I'll just move all this lot away and then have a clean up here and then uh, clean that off. And then, uh... all right, ah, and there we have just a nice little piece of meat ready to uh, bone out and uh, get all the different cuts, some uh, different cuts and things like that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this front end up, and again it looks a bit brown, a bit, but that's absolutely fine. The dogs will go mad for it. So there's uh, no problem with it at all. Just a thin, just taking a thin bit off, just to tidy this top end up like this. Get some of this skin off. The odd, odd lumps. Just tidies it up a little bit. There we go. Get any of the hairs you've left. A bit of roughage for the lads. Bits of hair, bits of bone, bits of all bloody sauce, they get all sorts in and it gives them a good good balanced diet. It's just what they'd eat in the wild if they were. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean off a bit of this, this uh, sort of covering and this top bit mainly. Like this. So you can get all this bit of a the muscle casing basically. Some of the bits of little bits of fat here like this. It's easier to do when it's in a big piece like this and try to deal with it individually, you know, the smaller bits of meat. Not a bad day out there today, but cloud slowly coming in, but it's not too bad. What a same again on this side it's not hard to see where you're working you don't have to be too obsessed with this depending on what you're doing you can always clean it off later or like I said depending on what the meat's being used for most of this would just dissolve in the uh, crock pot the lads will uh, enjoy it right now what I'm going to do is start taking this apart and what you need to be looking for you can actually set if you can see on here I apologise on the Light's not brilliant. And it's the same no matter what animal you're dealing with, whether it's a deer or a, small, a smaller goat or whatever else it is, you can see the different lumps of meat. And basically, what I, the way I work, I can never remember exactly what's meant to be where, but what I go on is if I get a piece off big enough and clean enough with no sinew running through it and no gunk on it, that, that can be roasted. Doesn't matter where it's from, I mean, they say that the only decent piece of, you know, on a deer's leg is supposed to be the, the quad muscles at the front. And that's great if you get tons of it and you can afford to waste loads of bloody meat like some do, but I can't. But uh, like I say, you just start looking for the different pieces. And as you see here, I get to the sinew there, that's it. You can actually just start pulling them apart with your fingers. And you only need the knife just when you actually get to the ends and you've got the connective tissues on the end and it just gets you, lets you get it off a bit cleaner like this, turn it off there 
Now pretty much that's the first lump on the outside. That is a big a piece that just comes off the, this outside here. But you can see this piece of meat here. That's a bloody big roast there. I'll just get rid of this fella. One of this will come in for those and the, the most sinewy bit that will go into the pan. So that can go in there. I've got a piece here. Now that will add, that will add, I'll probably just make a little pile, either get another bag or that will just, little pieces like that. If you get bits off, they're a bit scraggly from when we clean the animal and everything. Um, if you get bits like that, then obviously add them to your stew meat. Stew, sausages, salamis, whatever. So what you can see here now, as I start to go in again, and you can see where this piece of meat is. There we go. To there. And I'm going to pull this right round. Now I can feel the bone. That's the knuckle bone here. So without even having to use my knife, I'm going to pull this round. There we go. And you can see the, the connective ends there. Avoiding the meat, cut through the connective stuff. It leaves the ends of your meat a bit nicer looking. There we go. And I've got my hand in that one. And it's just basically just pulling them apart. There we go. Like that. Now this particular meat, this first big, the top piece I'm taking off here, will have, because it is a large piece of meat, but I'll get a couple of uses out of this one. There we go, into that. That's it. There we go. Now this one is actually made of, there's actually two pieces here, you can see another piece in here. And there's quite a bit of silver skin, but I can clean that up. And predominantly, that will go as a roast. So, that's that one. Over, and we'll get this big piece off here. This one. And when it starts to get down to the bone, it just gets a bit more difficult because there's more connective tissue going on to the bone. But again, what I'm doing here is I'm just going between the pieces of meat to there. There we go. to the bone. I don't want to disturb that piece of meat there though. That's a nice piece of meat. There we go. Now then, that'll go up there and round. You can feel where it runs with your fingers, but mind your fingers with your knife. And two. Now that again, that does have some a smaller bit of meat on the top. I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute. This, as you can see, it just starts to peel away here. Um, and then that'll be a mixture of a roast and, again, a bit more meat for the uh, slow cooker. Alright, now, this one, you've got a lump of meat now, that's the inside of the calf, the top of the calf. Also, which is the best bit, best bit from the lower leg, but it really, it's getting a bit tough down here, and that really, that's only going to any good for the uh, crock. So I'll get this off and try and get it off in one piece, but then I'll cut this up. Oh, up there. But that I'll treat that pretty much as I did the other leg meat, which is just cut, cutting it straight across to big long, leaving quite big pieces, and then that'll go in the crock pot for a few hours. Now we've got this lump of meat here, the main thigh muscle. That this is to say that a lot of people who people who are looking to do a lot of hunting say this is the only bit of meat worth eating off a leg, but uh, I can't be quite that choosy. And basically all I'm doing here is I'm just working around the bone with the tip of a knife. That's why the boning knife is handy because it's a nice thin tip. Your big skinny knife isn't as much use and it tends to have a thinner edge as well so it doesn't uh, stand up to being run around the bone as much. With a boning knife I can get a hold up and basically do what will give it a good edge and then it will hold up for the whole time I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Now that is basically one piece of meat. And that, I'll just clean this bit of, clean a little bit of fatty off from here, so it's clean. That'll go in a bag. I might actually cut that in half, because that's a good a good size there. And go, there must be yeah, a kilo and a half of meat there, so I'll cut that in half. Whoops! I'll cut that in half, and I'll get two big roasts out of that. Now, what's left on here, I'll just give this the leg a bit of a pick, because it's a shame to waste the meat that's on here. I'll get that cut up for the lads. 
Now I do give them the bones sometimes, depending on what I'm feeling like, because uh, of course my lads don't get bones on a regular basis. What you'll find if you give a dog a bone, it'll bung it up. And uh, because of the, all the calcium and everything in it, bungs them up. Then the problem is, then they get unbunged. And when you live in civilization land like me, and you have to clean up, it's not very pleasant. But anyway, I still like to give them a bone now because they bloody enjoy it. And so I don't, I'm not going to scrape every bit of meat off here. I'm giving them something to chew on and play with. So we'll get this in the kennel tomorrow. Now this bit, because I've got so much, this is just going to go. This is actually off the shin. Um, and probably the ends, I'll keep the middle, keep that middle bit. The ends where you've got more sinew, the lads can have that. And the end will go into, a, into the crock pot. And the same on the other piece. Just slide up the bone, take it off the sin, take it off there. And there, and I'll do the same again. I'll take each end off where it was joining onto the bone. That goes for the lads. The middle bit, which gives me a couple of quite nice chunks. Crock pot. And it tastes awesome. It's really nice meat. Really good meat when it's in the crock pot. Very tasty. Nice to live off uh, prime steak, but uh, that stuff's bloody tasty. Right, I'm going to take bottom knuckle off. A w, that's a bit of a W shape there, is that one? So you start from the lower joint, working it round. And off she pops. Simple as that. I think the lads are gonna bloody love them tomorrow. I say, ho oh, ho! Oh. So the fight is to get into the kennel tomorrow instead of out. So, I won't drag this out anymore, but that's basically no matter what animal you've got. So, like I say, that big thigh piece, that's going to be cut into two. And uh, I'll do that now. So, I'll just clean this end off. Like I say, I don't worry about it look too much fat because there's so little of it and it just melts away when you're cooking it. Just making sure there's no sort of like raggedy bits. Don't really want any sinewy bits on the, on the roast. Because obviously that's not going to be in hot enough or long enough to uh, get rid of them. So just, just a few minutes, just sort of, you know, cleaning them up. So it seems a lot of uh, faff and hassle, but to me this is, it, this is just, it, it's part and parcel of it. it. It's why I go. It's why I love, you know, I don't, I've got to say I don't massively love, I don't love killing anymore. I love bloody hunting, but uh, this is part of it. And one of the reasons I go is for the meat. Now then, there we go. Into three or into two. What do you think? What do you think? Three or two? Ah, do it two. Wow, look at that. Bloody hell, look at that. Oh, oh. As long as it fits in these bags, it'll do. Oh, do I that again? There we go. Come on, come on, get into that little bag, because then it goes. Oh, oh, I'm close. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Get some chair out of the bag as you can. I'm going to the third pile, I'm going to the roasty pile. That will make a that will make a very nice very nice Sunday lunch or something. And the other end of the thing, it's when you're actually working through the meat, you know, something like this. If you're having a barbie and you can go on running out of meat, there's nothing absolutely absolutely nothing to stop you getting a piece like this out, just slicing it to about maybe oh, just shy of an inch thick. Couple of centimetres thick, a few steaks for the barbie. So it, it works for it works for either. But I just find I tend to label up. I label up, and what I do is I label curry, 
stew and roast. Now the roast will generally be the better pieces of meat and uh, the backstrap, I also label the backstrap separate. So a roast could be steaks for the barbie, um, the backstrap obviously is a fine cut, then the curry is the meat which ha doesn't have a lot of sinew on it and therefore doesn't need a long cook, so that's why I call it curries. And then obviously the other stuff, the shin meat and the bits that have got more sinew on them, they all get labelled for the crock pot and they go in the crock pot for through the day. Crock pot pile. And there we go. Always end up with more crock pot than the other, but uh, that's fine. And there's nothing to stop you when you've got the uh, if you if you've got a crock pot pile. Take the ends off. Always take the ends off the ones because you, if you can see that's a bit wide. That's lots of sinew on the end. It's just not worth messing with. Um, you know, the, another thing on how far down the meat pile we've got is I'll take a couple of bags out, fill the crock pot up, stick it on before I go to work. You come home, you've got a load of well-cooked meat. You can use for anything. It can be a stew, it could go in a pie, it can be a curry, or, you know, anything. Anything you fancy. Now then, I think that might be crock pot meat. Yeah. But done like this, it's an awful lot of meals. Rather than just throwing, you know, and just throwing huge lumps of them together, doing it like this, you end up with a lot of meals that you can have. And obviously, with it only, with it only being me and the most beloved, as a general rule, I tend to look at somewhere between two and three hundred grams of meat, and that's per meal. I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I've got twelve meals, and I'm still still working away there. And that's before I even get to the goat. So, you know, it's going to last a while. So I'll start two piles off now. As I work through this, I want, three, well, probably three. There'll be the dogs. Then there'll be the stew. Down there. That's it. There we go. So that was a, the quite a, that was the second to largest piece. Just try and stab myself there. But like I say, I've taken that thin so I've said there'll be a bit, that's really quite good. So I'll clean around the edge of this. Like anywhere you've got any a bit of a down meat on there. A bit of hair and dark meat, a bit of roughage for the lads. And then the, the, the finer stuff, like that. There we go. We're going for the, uh, going for the crock pot. Like I said, I know some guys are probably thinking, oh, bloody hell, you're a lot of faffing around. But uh, I don't get to go often enough. And I'm not good enough to, cut, to have a constant supply of meat. So I don't like to waste anything. Even if that means, you know, you know, like I say, the lads get it. I don't care. But uh, I don't like to waste anything. I don't kill anything to waste it. I don't believe in leaving it on the hill. At all. all right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just a bit because it's been in the fridge and it's had air, air to it, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But it doesn't look as nice, so I just just take it off. Well, that's don't give a ch Put that down there. Fry me. It's to fry. There we go. There's that pile. Now what I've got again. Here's another big lump of meat. So I'll back this. Eight hundred. Oh god, that's not enough. Three. That's all at one. Two. One. Two. And you take your time and as you can see again, it's nothing but clean meat all the way through. Absolutely all the way through. Just taking that little bit of time, cleaning off around it. I'm going to run out of bags at this bloody round. Glad I buy a lot, a lot. Quite good. I mean, I know these are very small pieces, but it's like, we'll just, we'll just cut it in half, but about that's like, I mean, that is actually, what, nearly 300 grams of meat, you know, between 
you know, I mean the most we love it, she'll probably have about 50 now that we've put the rest, so it's plenty. And again, when I'm cutting them up, the other tip, don't do everything the same size. Because you might want to do something different with something, or if it's, you know, from midweek, you might want to do a bit more on a Sunday, so you've got sandwiches for the Monday morning. Right, you just might want enough to get a piece out, defrost it, cut three or four chunks off it, and throw it on the barbie. When the sun gets here, when the summer starts again, and the last piece on here now was the large flat piece I showed you. So I've got a piece now. This is going to be at least two pieces again, I believe, if I remember rightly. I'll get the fat off of this one. And what I'm going to try and do is do this. I get clean the big piece. So the big piece stays really clean as I can. This piece off. There we go. Now then, three bits. Get the end off for the lads. Down there, and there, and there, down there. Right. Okay. Oops, can I get back up? Right. What's in that? Now, once you get into these thinner, these longer, thinner pieces, you can keep them and roll them and roast them and stuff like that. But they definitely need longer cooking. So, like I say, this this would be this these couple of pieces here. I'll probably just um, relegate them to uh, to something like the fast cook for the curry, which obviously is a longer cook than just a bit on the barbie. Or, uh, like I say, or you could make a roll out of it. And make a really long, slow, give it a really good, long, 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 slow roast. There we go. Because I mean, again, we've got quite a nice little lump of meat. It's a, you know, a bit of a shame, really, just to, you know, make a curry or whatever out of it all the time. So I'm going to put that one in here. Just check it's heavy enough to be like a, like one piece of meat. There we go. It's only a bit small, really. Um, Right, what I'll do is I'll make a, I'll, I'll, I'll make a curry out of it. Two, three, four. There we go. That's 200. And I'll some more of this. So this last one now, I'm going to try a bit of silver skin just here. You can see that. I'm sure you've probably lost half of what I'm bloody doing on here. I do apologise. My camera skills are shite. In fact, everything I do is not that brilliant, but uh, all right, there we go. I'll sort that for the boys in a minute. Clean this all up. And then what I'm going to do with this is once I've cleaned all this off, if that's a little bit under there, no, that's all part of this, is I'm going to make a roll. So I'll actually back this up and mark it as a roll. And then what we'll do is we'll get this out at some point, maybe when we've got a bit of a some friends round or something like that and uh, like I say it'll just be rolled up maybe stuffed with a bit of something oh, there's a piece of meat I'm missing there look there we go I'll just take a bit of this end off here because that'll fill that bag up for me to give me enough for a meal out of that one like that There we go. And then this is going to go into a big bag, like I say, and I'll mark it as a rolled roast. And then what I'll do is I'll basically just squeeze it together. If you can see it, like, squeeze it up like this. A little bit of string, two or three pieces of string. Possibly I might even push the boat out and uh, slice the middle up and stuff it with something, whether that's apricots or something like that, a bit something a bit sweet. And then, like I say, then you just roll it together, pop it in the oven. Yeah, 180, leave it for probably oh, two to three hours, maybe three hours, and uh, it will actually, it will absolutely fall to it. Absolutely gorgeous. So, all these people who only say, oh, they'll eat the end, oh, I think oh, they waste so much pretty meat. There we go. So, that's pretty much it, guys. 
have a big pan of feed for the dogs. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 meals. So that's 19 meals out of one back strap and one hind leg. I've still got a couple of goats to do, but it's, I'll use exactly the same process, um, except for that, really, everything everything off the goat meat. I'll tend to, because it's the back legs, I'll take the big pieces off, and the best bits will go for making um, stews or curries. Or sometimes what I do is I'll just bone the back leg out, which I might do, I don't know, depends how lazy I am. But I'll just take the bone out of the back leg, and uh, stick it in the crock pot, and just cook it. So with that, I'll do, in fact, what I will do, I'll say this now, so I'll put two videos on. Um, I'll leave this one here, and then what I'll do is I'll get one of the uh, goat legs out, and I will skin it off and show you how I skin it and bone it, and then it just goes in a bag ready for the, ready for the uh, for a cooker. In fact, I'll do that now. I'm waffling. What right. I'm going to do now is I'll give this a quick, a quick clean off, and then I'll do one of my goat legs. So what I'm going to do now is run out of space, but um, what I'm going to, I'll get one of my goat legs out and I'll just skin that off and uh, I'll just show you how it's a very similar process but I'll, and I'll, I'll cut this and I, I, I'd love to speed it up but I don't know bloody how. And uh, and I'll just show you how I just um, bone the top joint out and then it's ready for, it's literally ready for Going into the oven, into the crock pot or whatever, and uh, getting your meal out of. So exactly the same process again, just working my way around. Try, I try and fold the skin out as much as I can, as you can see. Don't go mad at it because the hair just falls out like anything. But it's better after about a week when it's been in the fridge like this has for a week. It tends to hold the hair a little bit better. What I find is on the hill, you just you tend to get hair on bloody everything. Right now, Simple as that. Now then, what I'm going to do here is take this top part off, like this. Mr. W. There we go. Now then, normally, give the lads that because I've got other deer bone for them. What I'll do is I'll just skin this off here and I'll put it in the pot for them. This is really just not worth messing with. There isn't enough meat for me to do like a, a stew pack out of it. There we go. Well, that do it too, I suppose. But uh, there's plenty of meat in that top leg for a good couple of meals for me and the most beloved. So that can go in there. Bring it off. If it looks like meat, it probably is meat, and you don't really love it. Uh, don't forget to double bag your rubbish either when you've done that. Now what I'm going to do here is, right, yeah, you can have a good, have a bit of a look. Here's a good clean up yet, yeah, but have a bit of a look, and you'll again you'll find where you've got the lines in the muscle. And just pick one of them 
And then you start to go down and it just peels away. Don't get too close to the knuckle at the top because you get a lot of, you get a lot of sinew and whistly bits and you don't need it. There we go. And the top. And again, keep it well above the knee because that's just nothing but big lumps of sinew there. And there's the bone coming through, just tease your knife blade around it. Now if I was really being good, I would uh, probably uh, boil the bones and everything and get some stock out of it. No, I'm just going to take the burn off the top, both sides. That also gets rid of a lot of the hair from it. Time, energy, and bloody money. I haven't got any of them to be, to be too finicky. Thank you, everybody. I don't want to be working too hard on a weekend. I'm back at bloody work on Monday, so for now. Right, give that a quick clean and then I'll show you what Now, what I'll do with this is I'll actually just leave this as a full piece, as you can see here, um, and then basically that will just drop into the middle of the crock pot. And that'll probably get oh God, five, six hours. I'll put it or oh, even a whole day if I'm going to work. I'll get it, get it all ready. Turn it on as I go out the door. Turn it off when I get in. Find some of that I'm going to hair on it. So that's that. Lovely, lovely. And again, when you get home, you can actually eat it as is. Or pull the meat out. Break it up a little bit. And uh, do whatever else you want with it. Now that's 600 grams, 650, 700 grams. So, 700 grams of meat in uh, one bag, you know, that's just one, one goat thigh. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, there's no point with bloody goats, there's not a goat. There's a lot of meat on them. I've got the other one to do yet. So with that, let's have a look. Up here. Now then, guys, with that, I'm going to sign off. Um, it's probably going to take me, I'm going to finish off this other leg. By the time I've done that and cleaned up, it's, it will probably take me at least a couple of hours to um, edit this video, I've had at least a couple of hours, and then upload it and everything, so I'm not going to do the last leg. Um, I hope that was um, reasonably interesting. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, because when I looked at the screen, I wasn't sure how good the light was, and that's why I've got near the kitchen window and put the lights on, so I'm hoping it was a good enough light, and I'll soon see. Um, if it is, I'll cut this bit out, Simon, remember? Um, so I hope that, hope that was, uh, you know, reasonably interesting. Like I said, I've got all my different little bits of meat, I'm gonna, I'll, put a, I'll write on all the bags, um, Get them all in, then they'll all bum in, bum in the freezer. So like I say, this has been sat in the fridge for a week. Um, but uh, by doing it, I just find doing it this way, then whenever I go to get whatever I want out for a meal, we've got enough for eat, you know, for a meal. And you just tailor that to the size of the people in your house. Um, if you like uh, me and the most beloved here, um, then great. If, if friends come round, get two bags out, get three bags out, whatever you need. Um, it just it just gives you that versatility, and that's what I enjoy. Like I said, the ba the biggest thing that makes it sim much simpler is make sure your knife sharp. I do offer a knife sharpening service if you want a razor sharp kitchen knife. I can guarantee you a razor sharp kitchen knife. I can't guarantee how long it will stay sharp. The manufacturer saw to that one, and there's nothing I can do about that. But uh, like I said, I hope that was interesting. I will sign off and go crack on with doing anything else I've got to do. Um, I'll catch you on the next one guys, hopefully um, next time I remember my battery charger so I can uh, film what I'm doing on the out and about and uh, like I say, I'll catch you then, thank you for watching, um, have a subscribe, have a like, um, Instagram, Bush Bimbler, um, Custom Knives NZ on uh, YouTube, or Facebook, uh, also Facebook, Bushcrafting NZ, trying to get a bit of stuff going out there, trying to get some people together, you know, maybe get a bushcraft gathering, moots, knife whatever um you know so anybody interested give me a shout i'm west auckland you know so but anywhere you know can do stuff get some get something going somewhere i've just seen a bloody wasp don't like wasps i have bad reactions to them
hope you're having a bad reaction to that one. Okay guys, so I'll sign off, thank you, and I will catch you on the next one. Look after yourselves, keep well, and if you're out there doing it, be careful.